All right. Well, I've got several, you know, more than several questions for you. I just want to really let everybody get, kind of get to know you. Um, so, for starters, I understand that uh, if I'm correct, drums was your first instrument. Is that correct? Oh, yeah, that's correct. As, as, a, as a kid, you know, as I was very right. young, um, until I moved on to trumpet, uh, probably 10, 11 years old, trumpet. Okay, yeah. So, how old were you when you started playing drums? Uh, well, I, as far back as I can remember, I used to just grab the sticks with my brother's band and, you know, play with an electric band. And, yeah, yeah. And uh, my brother had a band called the uh, Lucky Boys back then. I was about five, four, five, six years old. It was my brother and uh, Fred Hootie played accordions. And Jerry Gendrus played clarinet sax. And uh, Louis Jelowski Jr. played the uh, drums. And uh, so every chance I had, every opportunity I had, I um, I would beg with my brother to let me pound on the set of drums. <laughs> so I can, you know, so I, I began to play pretty regularly, uh, you know, here and there. And then I began taking trumpet lessons um, um, when my my mother actually was very impressed by Marion Lush on Channel Nine WGN TV um, back around 1960, 61. And uh, she was really the force that pushed me to take trumpet lessons, and I jumped right for it. And um, right from grade school, I started when I was, uh, I think, in sixth grade, 11 years old, around there. Um, so right there in grade school, which at St. Peter and Paul, where I come from in Chicago, uh, many, many of the musicians in the polka field come from that neighborhood. And, and many of them took lessons from Stanley Micas, my music teacher as well. Okay. Well, so it sounds like your mother was your biggest influencer to for you to be a musician. She, well, she, well, she was. Well, I was influenced by my older brother, Richie, of course, because he played all through that time. Uh, and then my mom just kind of closed the deal on it, you know, and, uh, in, in our house. Lessons, huh? Yeah, well, you know, in our house, on, on the southwest side of Chicago back then, um, you know, polka music was on the air every weekend, and then it started you know, actually seven days a week. A little Wally had shows early in the morning, in the afternoon, uh, Chet Galinsky. Um, so there was a lot going on in Chicago back then. So, you know, I mean, you know, when Marion Lush picked me up in his van to play a gig when I was about 13, 14 years old, it may have as well been um, Frank Sinatra or someone in that neighborhood. <laughs> no kidding. So growing up in the uh, St. Peter Paul neighborhood, who were your regular musician buddies that you hung out with? That uh... You're, you're playing regularly with. Well, you know, uh, that neighborhood, uh, when I first started playing and um, when I grew up, there were three bands that were uh, very similar. I played in a band called the Happy Go Luckies, which consisted of myself on trumpet and uh, Bob Rappel on clarinet and sax, and uh, Jim Kubi Sukup on drums, and Larry Barra on accordion. Uh, neither of them are involved in folk and music today. We had a band called the Happy Go Luckies, and we went on to go on the Ron Terry Amateur Hour, uh, and we won first prize with that band. But at the same time that band was playing in, in that neighborhood, there were other there were two other bands. Um, one of them was called the Polka Lads, and that was a band that later changed their name to the Musical Airs. Uh, that was Sudzy, Richie Serajewski, Sudzy, and uh, Jerry Mitek. And uh, uh, on, uh, and uh, Reggie Jelowski on trumpet, and uh, Chuck Filinovich on bass, and Louis Jelowski Jr. on drums. Uh, they were the polka lads. And then Louis moved on uh, to a band called the Debonairs, and then they changed the name of the band to the Musical Airs. And they um, had a gentleman by the name of Roger Lipinski play drums. And so both of those bands were in the same neighborhood. And then let me just tell you about a third band. There was a third band called the Cavaliers, right from St. Peter and Paul, played in the church, at the church picnics and in the school, as we all did. And uh, that band consisted of uh, Gene Paskey on accordion, uh, Joe Dudek on drums, and Kenny and Bobby Pinta, the Pinta brothers on trumpet and clarinet and sax. So funny, I mean, we we're all probably a three or four year spread in age from, you know, from maybe 11, 12 years old to 14, 15. And we all played in the neighborhood and it was like second nature. Right, right, like the music, you know, it's pretty cool. Yeah, what high school did you go to? I, I never went to Kelly, Kelly High School. Kelly, okay, where, where many people and many folk musicians went. 
Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So um, growing up, besides polkas, what other music did you get into? Um, and what artists uh, was probably one of your biggest influences? Well, uh, other than polka music, you know, back in the 60s, uh, my buddy Roger Melodowski and I were longtime friends during that time. We used to listen to WJJD AM radio in Chicago, which, you know, country music back then, uh, as they say, wasn't too cool. It was before the CMA was established, the Country Music Association. So it was, you know, it was a big, it was a big entity, of course, um, country music, but um, not many people listen to WJJD. Raj and I listen to it all the time, and we got involved with many. You know, we, we loved country music back then, and I and also I grew up, of course, during the uh, British invasions. So all those bands coming up, I love them. You know, the, the Beatles were a knockoff of the Everly Brothers, who were making it big there while well, they were making it big here. You know, and uh, so bands like that, and, and as we listen to those recordings nowadays, I mean, they're so simplified. And you know, easy for people that like poker music to love that kind of music, you know. Sure, definitely. Um, how old were you when you first started playing on stage? You said you were picked up by Marion Lush. You were thirteen. Was that your first gig? Yeah, you know, I started playing trumpet. I, I was, uh, I was like in fifth. I was in fifth grade, um, but I, I was like eleven years old. And I, by the time I was twelve, I was already playing. So I think I was twelve years old. I just turned twelve. Uh, when we played in Ron Terry's Amateur Hour. And also when I when I was 12 years old, I recorded my first album with Jerry Petranchik. Um, and that album really wasn't released until I was 13. It was, the album was kind of held um, in the hopper for a while, my original album, but um, pretty early, pretty early age. Wow. And in Chicago back then, by the way, Brian, as your dad, as your dad would very well know also. Because he, yeah. he played the same circuit that I did, of course. Sure. But uh, in Chicago, it was all about the clubs, the lounges. Yeah. Uh, you know, I played the clubs north side, south side, far south, east side, south Chicago, uh, northwest, uh, the picnic rows. The clubs were very unique. They featured music actually four nights a week, and a couple of them went five nights a week, like the Polka Lounge on the north side. Uh, for, uh, the, the Polka Lounge would run from, on a Thursday, we would play there from... Uh, uh, from 11 p.m. until 4 a.m. Oh my gosh! <laughs> that's crazy. crazy. I, I didn't play. I didn't play when I was that age at, at the folk lounge, but um, a couple years later, I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's an interesting question for you. Um, now, again, I knew you played drums, and your main instrument, obviously, was trumpet, clarinet, saxophone. I never realized how accomplished you were on concertina. Now, it's funny, I recall seeing a video, I'm not going to say where, <laughs> of an old TV show with you playing concertina with the versatones. Is that right? Yeah. Do you, do you remember the name of the show, the TV show? I, honestly, I don't remember the name of the show, but it was pointed out to me that it was you playing concertina. I looked, I'm like, oh my gosh, it is. I, and uh, I think you were filling in for uh, Junior Boishiak. I think it was just for like a one-time thing. Well, Junior played violin. If, if Junior was playing with the versatones then, then it was uh, probably early 70s. So I was probably 20 years old, 21 years old. Uh, um, yeah. Junior played violin with the versatones, and he doubled on concertina with Jerry Garlick. Um, right. But yeah, I think it was, I think it was a five-piece version of the versatones. It was, it was really different. Yeah. Well, well, we used was... to switch around the versatones back, back then, actually going back to the 60s. Um, I recorded um, with with the versatones. I don't know how many songs on concertina, maybe half a dozen through the years, um, and and like stereo polka on the happy polka music LP, well, Apple Speeches LP. Um, but we we used to switch around. Like Roger Melnowski went on bass, Eddie went on drums, Molly Medusa went on clarinet, I went on concertina. We played two clarinets, and so we used to do that switch around thing, you know, and that just became a regular uh, part of the versatones after that Eddie went on yeah. drums. Eddie, a little footnote here, Eddie was actually um, inspired to go on drums uh, when he saw Marion Lush do that. Marion uh, used to do that back in the early yeah. 60s. Marion, uh, uh, Jerry Darlick would go, Jerry Darlick played uh, drums with Marion. Jerry would go on concertina, Marion go on drums. Marion actually recorded a song with his band on drums uh, that I played on. And, um, but uh, Eddie, Eddie followed suit pretty, pretty cool, and it really caught on, you know. 
Which song was that? Do you recall? It was, uh, it was, uh, it was on Angie, Anju Polka. It was done okay. instantly. And it was on, All right. I think it's on the Beer, Beer, Beer album. Beer, Beer, Beer. Gotcha. Which was probably cut. Yeah, I'm going to guess it was cut probably in the early part of the 70s. Thereabouts, my guess. So were you self taught on concertina, or did you? I was, yeah, I was self taught. I, I actually, my, my brother Richie, um, he bought a concertina um, on the old Maxwell Street, uh, you know, yep. Chicago. Just a couple of different words, names for it. <laughs> and uh, so he, he bought a concertina, and he saw the window, and he brought it home, and, and uh, I was able to take her with it, and it was, it was a little double. And I uh, started learning how to play it. Uh, just to go on a job one time, Molly Maduja had his concertina there, and I took his, and I tried to play his, and I could not just to find out that that was not a concertina, but it was a bandonian that my brother had bought. It looks just like a concertina, but the right hand is different. The left hand is the same, right hand is different. So um, I learned on a bandonian, and, and then I um, and then I bought a, my parents bought me a concertina for my eighth grade graduation, and yes, I was self-taught. And that concertina, by the way, was stolen off the off the stage at Poloni Grove. When, oh no! Uh, during this is during Bel Air days, when Bel Air days came to a close of the weekend, everybody was gone. Yep. And uh, we were packing up, Eddie and I, and a couple of the guys, and uh, the concertina became missing. You know, I'm going to guess, let's say 1970, 71. Sure. And uh, back in the early 2000s, I found that concertina on eBay. You probably heard that story. No, I didn't. Oh, that's interesting. I actually bought that concertina back on eBay. Same exact concertina. It was uh, bought from someone in a pawn shop on the north side of Chicago. And a gentleman that had it, um, his wife bought it for a decoration in their house. for a colorful oh. red and white box, you know. Oh, that's interesting. That's pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah, I've got man. another good story about a lost instrument that I'll share with you uh, before we wind up. Okay. Now, considering you play all these instruments, have you ever considered doing your own honky style album? Yeah, I did. I, I did. Yeah, I, I consider that. But um, I just think you know, people want to hear me. They want to hear the guys. They want to hear the band. You know. Yeah. Uh, but you know, maybe one day I'll do that when uh, when I have nowhere to play and I just stay at home and you know, I don't know. Maybe maybe if this continues another half year, maybe I'll do it. You know. <laughs> right. Um, so, including all the bands and contributions, uh, how many, or uh, yeah, contributions? How many polka albums to date have you recorded on? Well, somewhere around a hundred. Um, I think over a hundred actually. I started doing a list once upon a time, um, but I recorded with so many bands out of Bel Air back in the day, you know, and uh, and I recorded at other studios as well. I recorded. You know, up in uh, Minnesota with Billy and Mary Lou Cherniak, and uh, I mean, uh, you know, in New York, I've been to Mark Chapach's place and recorded with TBC. I mean, just so many places, and I think of these recordings here and there, and I, you know, put a note down for myself, but I never really followed through to name them all. But I'd say in the vicinity of a hundred albums, no doubt. That's that's awesome. That's awesome. Have you ever recorded outside of the polka genre? Yeah, a little bit, a little, a little bit. I, actually. Uh, when I was very young, uh, myself and the late Ed Penway uh, recorded with a band that was doing like a 60s rock scene in Chicago. And uh, Ed Penway actually picked me up. I didn't drive then. And um, they recorded two 45s. And one of the songs they recorded was uh, My Wife, She's the Apple of My Eye. Hey, da, 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 da. Did you hear that song? <laughs> Doesn't ring a bell. No, I just want to get that home. She's the apple of my eye. You know, it's a crazy okay. novelty sort of song. And um, uh, so, so I then they wanted a lot of they wanted bellow shaking. So Ed Penley shook bellows through the whole song, and I um, uh, played clarinet. And they wanted a lot of clarinet licks and crazy stuff. And I I did that, and uh, that was a long time ago. I, I tried googling that to find it, when, and I and I could not. Um, but I will one day. Um, everyone has their own process for writing a song. Now, what is what is your process when you write a song? Is it melody first, or is it words to paper first, or what's your what, what's your process on that? Yeah, I don't. Uh, you've written so many songs. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I um, 
I don't think I really have a, you know, I'm kind of one of those fly by the seat of your pants guys, you know? So, uh, I mean, like when we did Stefan's Christmas party, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, that Christmas honky tune we did, uh, we recorded that melody at Peppermint. And uh, I, we did that in the summertime, I want to say June or July. And uh, I had to fly back into uh, Youngstown to do the vocal on that song. And uh, I wrote those words while I was in a plane heading to the studio. Um, I didn't, you know, what do you say, Sashu, that crazy song, right? Yep. You know, so, so, um, so, you know, sometimes I work better under pressure that way. Uh, but every now and then, you know, I'll think of a hook or a phrase, and, I, and I'll put a little, you know, melody to it, or part of the melody to it, and something will come. I did the Massachusetts song that way, uh, the state song of Massachusetts. Right. Yep. Um, you know, I kind of was, was driving around and I kind of had this, some of the phrases of the words, I was trying to fit them together in my head. And um, and I used a little hand dictator and I just kind of... I was going to say, I hope you stop it like <laughs> before you lose it. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, sometimes, you know, you have to, you have to figure out a way to save some of those things, but yeah, you can't, you can't remember everything. I mean, because sometimes things will come to you. You know, all of a sudden, I mean, you'll be, you know, anywhere. You're sitting in a restaurant or at work or something, and you'll think of a word that will fit into a good song or a good rhyme or a cool melody. And then a lot of times when a melody sticks in your head, um, it's not because you created it. It's because, you know, you heard it somewhere, and you have to figure out where you heard that at. Right. Make sure that it's not someone's song that you're <laughs> recording and customizing, you know? I hear you. I understand that. Uh, how many songs do you think you've written or contributed to over the years? Uh, I'd say between writing and contributing to and and uh, composing, I'd say close to 200. Okay. Through being, uh, I'm a registered writer with BMI. Right. Uh, so I think I've some, maybe 180 around here, last I checked, I think. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, let's see. So during this time, while being home and not traveling and having time on your hands outside of your Honey do list, I'm sure it still has a big list for you. <laughs> Have you had time to write any new material? I did. I actually did. Actually, one of the songs that I wrote, um, I recorded on that um, uh, one single um, that came up with this COVID thing. Um, and I have a couple others that I have not recorded yet, but I, I just have them penned and uh, they're in my phone, just kind of hanging out there, parked until I do something with them. Also, during this uh, whole year, you know, we have an album that's recorded. I say album, we have a CD that's recorded, maybe 14 songs, 15 songs. And um, I'm finishing off all of the uh, singing on that right now at home. Uh, but okay. all the, all the, the uh, next question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the band work is done on that, on that album. Um, so I'm just uh, doing some vocals here and there when I have some, some time and just kind of piecemealing it. And it's working out good. It's coming along pretty good. I'm, I'm just not in a hurry to record it right now, to release it right now, um, you know, for several reasons, you know. But uh, it's coming and it'll it'll happen pretty soon. I look forward to that. Um, what hobbies do you enjoy outside of uh, playing music? Do you golf, hike, fish, anything like that? <laughs> not? No? no. I, I, I enjoy the game, watching the game, but uh, I'm only kidding. I No, I'm not a golfer. Uh, fishing once in a while with my son, with my family here and there. Uh, we camp a couple times a year. Um, my wife is a avid camper, and uh, out, out in the woods, we were we were out camping in August. We went up to Ticonderoga, New York, which is way up. Okay, eleven days up there, right in the woods with a camper. Uh, you know the real the real deal up there. Um, and my son loves it. Uh, his cousins love it. Um, but you know, lately what I've been doing is, um, around our house here, we've been getting a lot of things done. We've been cutting a lot of trees. I'm on about four and a half acres. So we have a lot of land that we want to repurpose. Uh, recently we've, re we've built a uh, tree house for Teddy. It's about a hundred feet out into the woods behind us. And it's a uh, two decker. It's almost completed. It's got a huge swing on it that goes across the forest. Oh wow! Our property here across the woods. We cleared out a whole section in the center. Uh, we put a zip line in for Teddy. Uh, I didn't do this. I was part of it, but I didn't do it. You got to test it out. Our, our our friend. Uh, yeah, it's coming. It's coming any day now. 
<laughs> the zip line goes from his treehouse through the woods, uh, straight east, about 125 feet. Holy so it's cow. cool. It's pretty cool. So we're in a process now of collecting wood chips and you know, kind of padding the trail and doing things to make it a little safer. But uh, it's a work in progress. So I don't, I don't golf, but I mean, stuff like that is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, over the years, uh, we've heard so many stories of uh, mus musicians' pranks and crazy road stories. Um, what was one of your favorite pranks that you pulled on someone? Uh, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't a real prankster. I mean, I, I, I did a few things here and there, but I, nothing really stands out. I mean, I, rem I remember when I first started playing with the Versatones, this is back in the 60s, um, I wasn't old enough to drive. I mean, I, I hung out at Bel Air. I used to actually teach lessons at Bel Air for a while. And I hung out. I was with Eddie always, and we were in the studio doing things always. And um, I saw it was a wild band back in the 60s. The Versatones was a wild bunch, crazy wild. Uh, believe me when I tell you. And, and, uh, and when I saw what was going on around me, um, you know, I, I did a couple of things. I just kind of followed suit. I remember one particular time for Eddie's birthday. Eddie celebrates his birthday in July, and he was he was working in his office at Bel Air. He's writing out checks, and he was all stretched out, you know, on the desk. And I had a um, whipped cream strawberry pie, and I stuck into his office and I tapped him on the shoulder. And when he turned around, I nailed him with the pie all over his books, all over his checkbook, all over him. All over the floor, he he was lost for words. <laughs> well, not totally lost for words. <laughs> was that where the pies came from in the early years of the push? Yeah, not no, the pies came before that. Even they those guys <laughs> thrown pies <laughs> looking for. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, when you and Mitch go to Poland, what is your favorite? One of your favorite places to visit? Oh, we well, we enjoy all of Poland because I mean everything is so. Uh, breathtaking. I mean, uh, you know, the scenery and the people and the food and, you know, the music and the whole package is awesome. We kind of prefer the southern region. Uh, most of my family is down. Uh, my grandparents are from like uh, Osobnica, Yaswa, way down south, and uh, Stel's family, that, that same region down there. Uh, Stel's mother is actually Czech, but, you know, we like it down south. Zakopane is a great, great place. And we have a lot of fun, a lot of memories. And um, we do a lot of damage over there, I guess you can say. <laughs> the, music is, the music and the food is wonderful. The people are so nice. And I think I think that's what we prefer. Um, but, you know, heading up to Gdańsk, Gdynia, Sopot, up to the Baltic, and the ride up there, I mean, there's so much to see, to see in Poland. Uh, so you're selling yourself short. If you just go to one area, but I, I, I think we always will, you know, wind our trips up with a southern tour. Awesome. All right. Well, Lenny, thanks so much for taking the time out to join us uh, this evening and answer some of the questions that we got. Um, it's always an honor to uh, be in your presence and uh, hear the stories, especially uh, from us being in Chicago. I mean, obviously, uh, Johnny, uh, you're a fan favorite of Johnny's. So, uh, we appreciate you coming on today and um, answering those questions and telling us the stories. Um, I love this part um, of getting to know people a little bit better because obviously we don't know those stories and nobody online knows these stories. So thank you so much for being on tonight and sharing your stories with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Christy. And let me just say before I sign off, um, uh, say hi to your parents for me and to John. And uh, and he's probably on, they're probably on a call. Um, but also, um, let me say, uh, you know, what a, what a wonderful job the IPA is doing, uh, bringing things up to another level, you know, with uh, social media, with technology, with what you did for the um, festival was just knock your socks off. I mean, I talk with people all the time. They're telling me, did you see that IPA thing? Um, and people say to me they were going to watch parts of it and they couldn't get away from their computer for the rest of the weekend, you know. So everything you did was spot on, and I, I enjoyed it. My wife and I, we had... We had the iPad outside. We had the TV on inside. We're in, in and out watching everything. It's just great, 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 great. And all the directors, what you guys are doing, the new, the new um, uh, uh, improvements with the Hall of Fame, uh, trustees, and so on. What a great, 
maybe go forward. So uh, thanks everybody for being part. Uh, thanks for you know keeping public music alive. It's really really important to all of us because um, there's never going to be another type of music that's more wholesome and good for the family as folk music is. I truly believe that. Well, thank you so much, and thank you for the kind words. And once again, uh, we appreciate you taking the time out to be here with us today. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody.